Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulation, skin care, skin health ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, of course, if you have a success story, we love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll take your calls in our second segment today. We've got a guest coming up. At the bottom of the hour, Dr. Elena George, author of the book, Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. Dr. George is an ENT doctor, ear, nose, and throat physician, MD, otolaryngologist, as they say, from Princeton University. Dr. George is not messing around. Princeton University is one of the best schools, one of the best medical schools in the country. She's also got a master's degree in microbiology. We'll talk to Elena George about big medicine at the bottom of the hour, and we'll get your calls here in our next segment. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please head to my blog, criticalhealthnews.com, or also pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the website, and of course, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth Treatment, Truth uh, Skin Health Treatments, go over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel made with a whole bunch of lipophilic, fatty, premium, very expensive vitamin C. You're not going to find that anywhere, folks. No preservatives, no fragrance, no uh, waxes, fillers, water, anything. No nothing that your skin can't use. None of uh, all the Truth Treatment products contain no excipients, no fillers, because you shouldn't have to pay for that stuff. All right, we're talking fats, especially essential fats and especially how, it, how essential fats are related to skin and skin health. There's so much misunderstanding about the skin. We spend billions, tens of billions of dollars on tens of thousands of different skincare products and for the most part from a biology, from a biological and from a biochemical perspective, they are useless with a capital U, useless. I got a letter from a, a gal in Canada, Casso uh, Rossum Yi. I think she says this, Casso Rossum Yi. She says, hello, where can I buy your products? I'm in Alberta, Canada. I've been suffering with cystic acne for two years, and the exacerbation is usually 10 days prior to menstruation. Now, what do you guys think about that? If you're a regular listener to this program, what do you think about a skin condition that flares up 10 days before menstruation before a period. Well, obviously, it's related to a period. It's not a skin problem. It's a hormone problem. And as we've been saying, we said yesterday, and we've been saying for the last couple of weeks, if you have a hormone problem, you've got a food problem and or a thought and emotion problem. Those are the two major control points for hormones, food and thoughts and emotions. Food and thoughts and emotions. When I say food, I'm also talking about sugar and toxicity that are associated with foods. Kaso Rasum Yi continues, it's usually along the jawline, sometimes, sometimes on the cheeks, forehead, and temporal area. What skin product would be helpful? Thank you. The reason I think this is an important letter is because it's emblematic of how we think about the skin. This poor girl who's dealing with this condition, and cystic acne, if you haven't had it, it's miserable, it's awful. It's painful to, it's painful to have and it's painful to look at. 
And it's unfortunate and tragic because it doesn't have to happen. If you have a cyst growing, it's a lymph problem. And if you have a lymph problem, you got a food problem, period. Or a, a nutritional problem, I should say. This poor gal doesn't know this. Somebody's probably selling her skincare products. So I write back, hi there. Well, I'd love to sell you some of my true skin health products, uh, skin health treatments. And while they may improve the texture and appearance and even the health of your skin, it sounds like you have an internal nutritional and digestive problem, not a skincare issue. And then I gave her my phone number, told her to call me. As a skincare professional, that's what I am primarily. Well, I'm a skincare professional as well as a nutritionist and as well as a pharmacist. But I have a special passion for the skin. I've been working for this, with the skin for 30 years on all levels, as a formulator, as a compound pharmacist, as a researcher, as an educator. I owned a school where we taught estheticians some of these ideas that we talk about every day on this program. So all the, I wear many hats as a healthcare person, but skin is really my passion and my love. And as a skincare professional, the most important thing I can tell you guys about the body's largest organ, the skin, is the beauty and the attractiveness of the skin, the health of the skin, the resistance to disease of the skin. And remember, the skin is designed to be resistant. That's what its purpose is, is to, is to uh, protect the inside from the outside. The number one factor when it comes to skin health, to understand how to take care of your skin health, is if you have a skin problem, you have an internal problem with rare exceptions. Sometimes you may get an, a topical allergy to latex or something like that, but that's rare. Maybe solar radiation, sun poisoning or something. Even those are going to be related to the internal milieu. But for the most part, 99% of the time, skin health issues, dry skin, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, accelerated aging, wrinkles, dark spots, you name it. These are the end result of internal health conditions. No one just has eczema. No one just has psoriasis. No one just has acne. No one just has hyperpigmentation. These are the end results. These are the final stages of a breakdown pro uh, uh, process that's occurring inside the body. And so if you have these things on the outside of the body, that's the end. The eczema is the end. It's the end of the, uh, it's the final result. It's the way the body has dealt with the biochemical dysfunction. You can't treat that part. That's why dermatology is useless. It's the most useless of all medical professions. That's why the only thing you'll ever get at a dermatologist's office is an antibiotic or a steroid. To this day, decades after we discovered steroids and antibiotics, decades after uh, the profession of dermatology was established, we're still treating people with the same useless procedures. Drugs like antibiotics and steroids, or sometimes maybe surgeries, or radiation, or cryotherapy, the dumbest of the dumb. And I'm sorry to my friends who are dermatologists, and I have many. And I tell them to their face. I tell them all the time. And they laugh. I once, tell, I once asked a, a friend of mine, a dermatologist, I said, why are you prescribing these antibiotics? This was about 15 years ago. Why are you prescribing these antibiotics for rosacea when you know good and well? It's not a bacterial condition. Rosacea is a classic digestive issue. And she said to me, that's what patients expect. Now, this was before doctors knew about antibiotic resistance. Pharmacists knew about it. But this was before doctors knew about it. And she said to me, she was a big writer, too. She was one of the biggest writers in the, I'm not going to tell you what city it was, because she's pretty famous, but she says to me, that's what patients expect. They don't feel like they've gotten treated unless they got an antibiotic. Well, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. If you can't figure out what the heck to tell your patient, and you're a dermatologist, about essential fatty acids, about vitamin A, about food allergies, about the lymph, then you shouldn't be in the business. Anyway. No one just has a skin health issue. Skin health issues are symptoms. They're signs of problems. They're not the problems themselves. And you cannot effectively eliminate symptoms without eliminating the causes. Got another letter here from Randall. This one's tragic. Randall says, can you help me with my girlfriend's son's R-D-E-B? You're going to love this one, R-D-E-B. I'll tell you what this is when we come back from our break. And I'll tell you what I said to Randall, or what I wrote back to Randall. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're talking to Dr. Elena George. At the bottom of the hour, we'll take your calls in our next segment. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. are back on the bright side. Our number is 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in just a moment. Got Dr. Elena George coming up at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about big medicine. 
This is such an important idea because we, most of us, are laboring under the illusion that somehow doctors love us. That somehow our doctors are our friends. They do house calls. They got their little bags, little uh, doctor bags with the stethoscope and they give us a little kiss on the forehead and, a, and some aspirin and medicine and all is right in the world. Marcus Welby, MD. This is the idea. This is what big medicine wants us to think. It's not true. Big medicine is really about corporations, the same way big pharma is about corporations, the same way our world is run by a corporatocracy, our healthcare system is the same, it's the same setup. It's a corporatocracy. We, we don't live in a democracy. We live in a corporatocracy. The corporations run the world. And that's egregious enough when it comes to how we live our lives in terms of paying our bills. But when it, when it comes to our health, when it comes to our biology, our biochemistry, our wellness, that's just nasty business, man. Anyway, Dr. Elena George is going to talk about that, the cost of corporate, uh, uh, corporate control, big medicine. And we'll do that at the bottom of the hour. We'll get your calls here in just a minute. There's a, God, so many things I want to say here about the skin. A new uh, FDA approves new plaque psoriasis treatment. Plaque psoriasis is one of the worst kinds of psoriasis. There's no treatment for psoriasis. You don't need to be treated for it. This is a kind of vitamin D sort of substance. How do you like that? This new drug, calcipatriene hydrate, is a, with a steroid, is a sort of, kind of, sort of fake vitamin D. Pharmacological. I'm pretty sure that's, I'll have to look, at, look into that. That's what it sounds like from the chemistry, but from the name. Vitamin D is a tried and true. I don't want to say treatment, but tried and true strategy for improving psoriasis. The sun, everybody knows, everybody who has psoriasis knows when they're out in the sun, it improves. They use sun lamps. Dermatologists, smart dermatologists will use sun lamps. That's why fish oil is so important. Fish oil is amazing stuff, by the way, for the skin. From uh, the latest edition of the Journal of Dermatological Science, oral supplementation with fish oil reduces dryness and itching. Pruritus, they say. That's itching in uh, dry skin. I've, I've seen this for decades. All essential fats. I wanted to talk about essential fats here in the skin. We'll do that on our next program. I've got a bunch of calls here I want to get to. Uh, just one thing. Uh, Randall writes from, uh, Randall, I don't know where Randall's writing from, but he talks about his girlfriend's son's skin condition, R-D-E-B. You're going to love this one. Recursive dystrophic epidermolysis boule. Yes, that's the name of the disease. Recursive dystrophic epidermolysis boule. Now, if somebody told me I had that and I didn't know what it was, I'd be freaked out. And of course... Poor Randall's freaked out. But all this means is you've got inflammation in your epidermis. And because of it, the top of your skin is separating off of the bottom. It's caused by, guess what? Inflammation. The same thing that causes everything. If you want to know about a cause, and it's not really a cause, it's a precursor. It comes ahead of disease. It's always going to be inflammation. And there's only three reasons why we have inflammation. Nutrition, or I'm sorry, starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Take that to the bank, people. Starvation, suffocation, toxification leads to inflammation, which leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Why is this important? Because starvation means nutrition. Suffocation means oxygen, breathing. And detoxification means stop putting the crap in the system. Do you hear any place for a dermatologist or a doctor there? No. That's why it's important. It's because it empowers us. That's what this program is about. It's about empowering us in the most fundamental, uh, in the, uh, empowering us in the most fundamental aspect of our livingness, and that's our health and our wellness. You guys, our bodies are meant to heal. This is so tragic. This is so heartbreaking. You know, if you have a health challenge or your loved one has a health challenge, yeah, it's heartbreaking to you to watch, but I'm seeing it over and over again, thousands of times. I'm seeing people suffer needlessly. And then going to healthcare professionals who are ignorant themselves, hopefully, and not just mean-spirited. I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they're ignorant. And it's so, so unnecessary. Get on a supplement program. Reduce your intake of any foods that mess up your digestive system. Breathe deeply. Use good thoughts and good, don't marginalize the idea of mental and emotional and spiritual strategies as well. Reduce your intake of sugar. Get on a rebounder. Move your body. These are all the basic strategies that can allow our bodies to restore itself, restore itself. And we're not doing the work here. The body's doing the work. We're just creating the setup. We're just setting the basis for the body to hit the home run. We're just setting the table for the body to have the meal. We're just preparing the way for the body to do its work. 
and it's not difficult, and it's most certainly not a doctor issue. All right, so for this gentleman, by the way, with the RDEB and his son, look for digestive problems. Look for foods that are causing inflammation. RDEB is specifically associated with an enzyme that builds up in response to dirt, in response to de defects. It's called collagenase. Collagenase. Remember, whenever you hear the word ace or the ending of a word ace, you have an enzyme. Collagenase is an enzyme that eats up collagen, and it only eats up collagen when the collagen is defective, and the collagen is defective when there's inflammation. So for this kid with this uh, RDEB, re uh, recessive dystrophic epidermolysis, boulet, look for digestive issues. Use digestive support. Use the Biolumin Nightly Essence. Make sure you're on the Healthy Start Pack so you're getting your Mighty 90 essential nutrients. Make sure you're pounding the essential fats with foods. Reducing sugar intake and any, any kind of inflammatory food, reducing it all, and sugar counts. Practicing deep breathing techniques and moving the body around. Same thing if he had arthritis, and RDEB is nothing more than arthritis of the epidermis. Okay, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Time to hit our phones. Let's go to... Uh, da, 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 let's go to uh, Chuck in Idaho. What's going on, Chuck? Welcome to the bright side. You've been holding on forever. Chuck. This is Chuck. How you doing? What's up, Chuck? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Hey, um, man, I've got so much I'd like to talk to you about. So to be fair to the other callers, uh, I'll cut it down to one question. Okay. Um, well, first of all, is mayonnaise qualify for what you just said about ending in AISE? <laughs> no, that's mayon. <laughs> that would be mayonnaise, smart Alec. It's mayonnaise. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you got me there. You uh, okay, all right, hey, funny boy. Know, I, I've yeah. been weaning, I, weaning off of Synthroid and Armor. Yeah. Um, How you feeling? I, yeah, excuse me. How are you doing? How you feeling? I'm feeling great, I, and that's what I'm asking you. Um, that's what I'm calling about. I wanted to know. I've been. I cut my dosage in half exactly in half and it's been over 30 days now that i still feel totally fine now praise god so, i can't tell you how many times i hear that people just get thrown on these drugs and by the way synthroid and thyroid are the best-selling drugs in america among the best-selling drugs in america i think they're number one this year go ahead i'm sorry that's okay um so now whenever i would go to the doc and get blood tests and do the numbers thing he would always wait two or three months whenever we would make an adjustment on the dose. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's really necessary. After 30 days... Nobody knows what I, they're doing, Chuck. They don't understand. Right. They're, they're just throwing stuff against the wall and see what sticks, period. You have a, when you have hypothyroid, this is the problem with the thyroid, with the treatment for the thyroid. If you have a thyroid problem, you don't have a thyroid hormone problem. That's a symptom. The problem is in the gland. Do you follow me? And so replacing the hormone without fixing the gland doesn't help you because now the body's got this foreign hormone that it has to figure out how to deal with. And that's why your dose has to keep changing. Hang on, Chuck. I'm going to finish up when we come back from our break. We've got Elena George coming up at the bottom of the hour. Sorry if we left you on hold. Give us a call back on our next program. Tell our call screener we left you on, and we'll get you first up. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7, on our archive page at brightsideben.com. Got four-plus years of archives, lots of archives, lots of good health information at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com, and both uh, pages have search engines. You can also go to my blog, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the Truth products, Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% gel, go to Truth treatments.com truthtreatments.com okay i am excited to talk to our next guest elena george is a physician an md and an ear nose and throat a physician otolaryngologist as they say from princeton university she's written a book called big medicine the cost of corporate control and how doctors and patients working together can rebuild a better system so i see two parts there i see the cost of corporate control and then i see part two how doctors and patients working together can rebuild a better system and those are two separate ideas that i want to talk about with dr elena george welcome to the bright side dr george Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for wanting to be on. Uh, so I love the title of the book, first of all, Big Medicine, because we always hear about Big Pharma, but we don't mm -hmm. really hear a lot about Big Medicine, right? No, we don't, and they're all integrated. There's been an absolute shift in what medicine is now. It used to be patient-centered. Doctor-patient relationship was the key, 
that's been shifted to corporate interests, and we're all suffering because of it. Isn't it interesting how when you go to these HMO places, how we, the doctor's not there for us anymore. It's, a, it's been no. shifted. The doctor's, he works for Kaiser now. Absolutely so, right. An right? independent doctor has a fiduciary responsibility and an accountability to the patient. When they become employees of hospitals in these systems, mm -hmm. they're answering to the board and to the corporate exactly. drivers of the health care. It's a problem. That's a then that's a very underappreciated shift, but a very, very important shift. Your doctor is no longer working for you. He's working for, for a, a corporation who's bottom, who legally, like you say, doctor, is a fiduciary obligation. Legally, they have to be concerned with the bottom line, right? It's a, you know, there's a fiduciary obligation to, be, to honor Absolutely. the bottom line. It actually comes down to algorithms at this point. If doctors don't follow what is driven by the electronic medical record, mm. you can't even close the chart. And if you keep going outside of it, you become a disruptive doctor and you're, you're on the hook for sham peer review, which they can remove you from the hospital setting. You may never practice again. You know, that is unbelievable. And here's the thing, Dr. George, there's some docs who are, you know, as time moves on, younger and younger doctors graduate and older doctors leave. And eventually there's a shifting over into a, 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 a citizenry, a doctor citizenry or a doctor population, if you will, that is, doesn't know any different that doesn't even remember a time when the doctor, you know, worked for the patient or was an independent doctor, you went to the doctor's office and it was a real office, his own office or, or even house calls. You know, more and more doctors are, have forgotten that and that's how, that happens in a lot of, in a lot of uh, uh, venues. But in the medical venue, there's a lot of young doctors who don't know any different than Kaiser and HMOs, correct? You make an excellent point. There's been a change in the medical education. The Hippocratic Oath itself has actually changed. When I took mine, I was not allowed to do it, still am, because it, it matters to me, not allowed to do any harm. I have to be an advocate for my patient. I can't, um, you know, cause euthanasia. I can't perform abortions. That's the oath I took. The new one is completely different. They modernized they it? Allow, that's correct. And they actually <laughs> allow people to perform euthanasia in the new Hippocratic Oath. So it's completely opposite to what people actually think. And what that's is a tragedy. They're ed they edited it. I didn't know this. They edited oh, the yeah. Hippocrat. Oh, oh, my God. Is nothing sacred? No. If you read my book, it's actually, I give you an example of the old Hippocratic Oath, the classic one, and the new one that's taken. I, you know, I'm looking at your book right now. The Hipp I, I, I thought doctors weren't, um, they didn't take the Hippocratic Oath any longer. Uh, well, I did. <laughs> and you they took, do, you took it's just a, it's a, pretty much a UN version of it. So uh, did they? globalized. Did yeah. they change the, the did, a lot of people don't realize, but there's an, it says I will do no useless, I'm going by memory here, I will do no useless surgery and I will prescribe no, no poison, right? That's correct. That's part of the Hippocratic Oath. That's correct. Did they leave that in there? Um, well, it's kind of, it's kind of a neuro-linguistic version of it. So, it, you know, apply for the benefit of the sick, all measures that are required, avoid okay. the twin traps, over-treatment and therapeutic nihilism whatever that means. Ther did they use the word therapeutic nihilism? <laughs> yeah. How interesting is that? Like everything's useless? What, like we can't, mm -hmm. what does nihilism mean? There, there's nothing, it's not worth doing anything? How do you have therapeutic nihilism? There, there are an oxymoron, no? I, I agree with you. That's why it's <laughs> nonsense. It allows people to actually talk about end of life decisions instead of actually trying to help the patient and pushing people into a hospice um, track. I mean, it's not about health care. The Affordable Care Act was about control. Oh, absolutely. Control of one-sixth of the economy, control of patient choices. I mean, I'm all about individuality and independence. And if people choose a natural method of treatment, I'm all for that. But in this system, it's being negated and it's being demonized. And they are systematically removing doctors who actually want to help people, who actually want to get them better. It's all about giving you a drug at this point and putting you on a track. And if you're too expensive make you comfortable. How about the idea of co-opting the uh, alternative strategies with, for example, I'm thinking about there's these essential fatty acid drugs. Have you heard about these? This thing called Corgard, which is like fish oil, but it's a prescription mm -hmm. and costs you $100 a bottle. Yeah. Well, you know, it's actually a scam by the pharmaceutical industry, isn't it? They take what's natural. They make it somehow. They try to co-opt it, make it trademark it. They patent it. it. Yeah, and I'll put a little ester on it. It costs you ten times more. I agree. How do you like that? That's, yeah, I don't, and that's <laughs> the problem. And more doctors actually need to speak up about that. Now, are you seeing patients, Doctor George? Or are you at this point a, a troublemaker? 
I'm saying that I'm in a, a kind way. <laughs> <You're> t- <laughs> yeah, I'm, I see patients. I'm actually talking with you now in my lunch hour. I love what I do. I'm a doctor. I see patients every day. And I'm proud to say I'm an independent doctor. I'm not on the payroll of any hospital. I take care of my own patients. And my responsibility is to follow the Hippocratic Oath. And that's why I wrote the book. I wanted people to understand finally, from a doctor's perspective who practiced, why it broke, who are the players who broke it, and more importantly, how you get around this system. Now, I, I have a lot of friends who are physicians. I've been a pharmacist for 30 years. So, you know, for the most part, the individuals who are physicians are good people. They want to help. Mm-hmm. They want to make a difference. And I'm, I'm somewhat guilty of beating up on the profession. I don't know if, you know, you've probably listened to my program a little bit. So, you know, I, I I'm kind of guilty of it. And I know doctors are demonized in a certain part of, a, part of the alternative marketplace, if you will. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that as a physician? How do you, does it, are you embarrassed or do you want to, what's your take on on it as a physician, as a member of this, this kind of profession that has done so much, has misled people, even though the individuals are kind, as right. the profession that has misled people so much. How do you feel about that personally? Well, I personally think it's been hijacked by corporate interests, and I think that our AMA has sold a bill of goods to doctors and patients, and they don't work for us anymore. They're actually in bed with the corporate interests. That's what the coding system's all about. That's what demonizing supplements are all about. And, you know, there's lots of ways to treat patients. I think that we should be given the freedom as physicians and patients to choose what's best for us instead of some, you know, big brother telling us you can only do it this way and Mm -hmm. it's better. If it's not Mm -hmm. part of the system, we can't make money on you, then we're going to demonize it. I'm smart enough to know the difference. And I think there's a growing number of doctors who think that way, too. Dr. George, we've got to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about the second part of your subtitle, How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. We're talking to Dr. Elena George. Her book is Big Medicine. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side talking to Dr. Elena George about her book, Big Medicine. Doc, before, we, uh, before I forget, give out your website real quick, and how can people get a hold of you if they want to talk to you more or get more sure. information about what you're talking about? You can go to DrElenaGeorge.com. That's E-L-A-I-N-A, George, like the man's name, dot com. I've been writing this for about four years or five years now. So there are also blogs and um, some links that I think people will find really helpful. What, what is your blog website? Um, it's the same thing, DrElenaGeorge.com. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. DrElenaGeorge.com. So everything's on DrElenaGeorge.com. That's correct. Even how to get the book. Okay, good deal. Um, all right, so the second, your subtitle is The Cost of Corporate Control and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. So I want to talk about that second part because it's very interesting. I find the idea that doctors and patients can work together very intriguing, and I want to get to that. But before we do, you talk about rationing, uh, this idea of rationing, and I, th- I don't think people really understand what that means and the implications of that. And then you mention socialized medicine. And then you link them to Obamacare. So I'd like you to take just a moment and talk about the problem of rationing and what that really is and the implications of rationing. And then what exactly you mean when you say socialized medicine and how these two things are connected to the so-called Affordable, uh, Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Well, rationing comes in two, two sections, if you want to put it that way. There's the insurance company's uh, view of rationing where they want you to pay a premium and then deny you care after the fact. They've been masterful at doing that, and they've right. doubled down on that in Affordable Care Act. Then there's the soft side of it, and that's patients self-rationing because they don't have enough money to actually uh. come to the physician or actually get the services they need because their out-of-pocket costs are so high. When I opened my practice in 2001, people, would, if they had insurance, paid nothing. They just you know, present their card, and it was all covered. They're now coming in having to pay upwards of $10,000 out-of-pocket before the insurance kicks in the first dime. Minding you, they're paying their premiums right along, you know, $12,000, $25,000 for a family, and then they're on the hook for up to $10,000 more. They don't tell you this. And ultimately, people were hoodwinked into thinking that having health insurance equals access to quality health care. I can tell you that it's not equal. You can carry a piece of plastic, but it doesn't mean you're going to be able to see a doctor. And if you do see one, one that works for you instead of against you. Doctors are now agents of the government in this new system. The wow. Affordable Care Act has something called meaningful use, where we're forced, if we, if we choose to, um, take Medicare, 
forced to ask questions like, do you have a gun in your home? Have you ever tried to hurt yourself? How many people live at home? Pediatricians have to ask if your child thinks he's a boy or a girl. Let me tell you, this is a metadata system. They are gathering your data for population-based medicine. And there is no... Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, Dr. George. Population-based medicine? What do you mean by that? That's correct. That sounds... They're looking at, at sickness amongst populations, black people, women, children... They're trying to drive or get information about each of us as an individual. For example, if I write a prescription for somebody to help them stop smoking and it's a an depressant, I'm not using it because they're depressed. I'm using it because I want to help them stop the craving. All the system sees is that they're on an antidepressant. And that tell, let me tell you, it goes through the entire system. Oh, wow. HHS looks at it. FBI looks <laughs> at it. And my personal feeling is that there's nothing to stop them if you want to get a, a legal handgun or get a government job from saying, hey, you've had an antidepressant in your background, you must be unstable. Wow. This is the system that we're going into. It's not personalized at all. And you just become a data gathering source, and they're going to apply whatever they believe about you to you, whether it's true or not. So the, the Leviathan was hiding inside the Trojan horse of the Affordable Health Care Act. And then it Absolutely. jumped. We let him into the city, and he jumps out. And that's and it's really all a, a, da- a data grab. No question. It's not about health care because if they really wanted to get you better, they wouldn't be cutting off medications. For example, Medicare alone covers Avastin for um, uterine cancer because it doesn't help that many people. and It's too expensive. Everybody's now a cost center. And they pay doctors now to talk about end-of-life decisions, but not to give you the medical care you need to get you better. It's outrageous. Now, now. I'm going to ask you a quick question, and this is just personal. I don't know if you, you'll have an answer to it, but just your personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think Obama knew about this as a, as a person? You know, do you think he was aware that this was, that this was, with, this was about when he was proselytizing and using the bully pulpit to, to kind of push this thing? Do you think he personally knew about it? I know you don't know for sure. What's your take? Well, my take on it is nobody read the bill, but I think that they, they wanted this chaos. Because but him personally. Of, him him personally. I think no. I think, but he thought that single, he's in bed with single payer. He wants that. And that's what the whole system is moving towards. So it, obviously he didn't write the bill, neither did the Congress. It was the pharmaceutical industry, medical insurance industry, the unions were involved, hospital corporations were involved. They wrote the, the bill. They wrote oh, the bill. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's a lobby driven bill and it's full of pork and cronyism for these particular corporate interests. There were no doctors in there that practiced medicine. There were no patients involved. We're the last on the list. That's All we do is drive the system. We, we, as doctors, we help, char- you know, help the system charge because we order the tests and we order the prescriptions. But they, they don't like us very much. They want us to shut up and just keep ordering. And okay. patients <laughs> don't okay. get sick. All right, so here's the deal. The program's the bright side. We know the bad news, and it's important that we tell people the bad news and we, and we don't shut up about this. But what's the good news? Second part of your subtitle, how doctors and patients working together can rebuild a better system. What's your take? What's your vision? The first thing that people need to understand is they need to find an independent doctor who is not in this system. There are growing numbers of doctors out there who practice medicine using Hippocratic Oath. And if you go to a website called aapsonline.org. I will say that again. A-A-P-S. Online.org. What is A-A-P-S? It's an association of American um, physicians and surgeons. These are okay. independent doctors who join together. They are the anti-AMA, if you want to put it that way. Oh, wow. And we have doctors who specialize in practicing medicine, again, using the Hippocratic Oath. There's sliding scale, so if you don't have insurance, we make it affordable. There's direct primary care. Wow. There's a, a subscription model where you can pay. I give, I give myself an example. $65 a month in my ear, nose, and throat practice of people who join my membership will cover any ENT service I offer, hearing tests, allergy testing, endoscopic examination for that $65 a month. That's reasonable. And if I cut the middleman out, I can stop doing all these stupid regulations and nothing but nonsense that jacks up the price. That's going on across the country. And what there's another little pearl that people don't know about called medical cost sharing. It's in, It's written into the Affordable Care Act, but nobody ever talks about it. What it is is a consortium of self-pay patients who join together, cover their own health care expenses, and they're parallel to the system. They're able to access the real 
cost of health care, which are about a third of what people are paying now. And I joined and I put my office staff on it because I personally cannot deal with the insurance industry. So I'm having the most expensive policy, which is $199 a month. I pay a total of $500 out of pocket per year, and I'm covered up to a million dollars per occurrence per year. And I can go to any doctor, any hospital that I want. And wow. I also get benefits for holistic care as well. So if I want to do Qigong or Reiki or whatever I choose wow. to do, it's covered. That's the alternative that exists now. Patients need to know that it exists so they can make an informed choice. And that's what the book teaches people. Now, Nat, tell me about this insurance program again or tell the listeners like how they – because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be interested sure. in this. It's called Liberty, um, Liberty Health Share. And okay. if people go to libertyoncall.org, they can learn all about it. It's not new. It's been around for about 18 years, but it was a small organization. But it, it, it morphed into a more inclusive, anybody who's liberty-minded, anybody who wants to take responsibility for their own health and will voluntarily cover somebody else's, their, their members' health care needs. And this so is all on your website? This it's is, all this on the website, so is the link. But it's, it's the future, and it's actually your choice that you don't have to do the Affordable Care Act if you don't want to. You don't have to go to Aetna or Cigna or any of these other insurance companies because, trust me, they're becoming too big to fail. And the more power they get, the more they charge you, the less they pay the physician, the worse the care is going to be. Wow. Dr. George, you are doing some super, super work. I can't tell you how grateful I am as a, a fellow healthcare professional for what you're doing. Just awesome stuff. The book Thank is Big Medicine, Dr. Elena George, and then uh, it's Dr. Dr. Elena George dot com. Dr. Elena George dot com. Check out our blog and uh, check out our website, and also Liberty Health. That's really cool information. LibertyOnCall dot org, and then also the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, AAPS Online dot org. Thank you so much, Dr. George. Have a Thank have you a great day. Me. Good to talk to you. You too. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, that's uh, libertyonline.org. I highly suggest you check them out if you don't want to be dealing with Obamacare. And then also aapsonline.org, and that's the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. Check out Dr. George's website. All this information is up there, plus her blog, drelenageorge.com. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a spectacular, awesome, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. <laughs>